Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I was given four large household appliances from one of my co-workers and friends. Shout out to the entire Nolan family. I appreciate you calling me up to take these. All of them unfortunately don't work and they were nice enough to allow me to use them and scrap them for this video. So again, thank you to the Nolans. What I have here on the side is a washer and dryer Whirlpool made around 2002. I have a Bosch dishwasher here made around the same time. And lastly, a KitchenAid oven here. All four of these great scrappable items. And as you can see, I have already taken them apart. I do have full teardown videos of all of them and I will include those links in the description. And I do also wanna say, address another question I had from other viewers, which appliance is easiest to take apart and which one is worth more as scrap? And to answer those questions, all of them are easy to take apart. There are a number of bolts and screws that you see here. It took me about an hour and a half to separate all of these items. It will take me a little bit more time to further break down the copper and other items and the motors and stuff, but they are easy to take apart. And the second question I will answer, which one is worth more? It all depends on the scrap material that are found in each. Some of them are great with stainless steel. Some have a lot of copper inside of them. Some are aluminum. So it does depend on year, make and model, size. Um, but all four of these do have great scrap value. And another thing I do want to mention about appliances is you can bring them in whole and get appliance weight price which is about five cents a pound. And these were extremely heavy, especially the dish or the washing machine over there. Uh, but you are gonna make a lot more money taking the time to separate the material. So gonna today talk about some of the materials I found in each one of these, talk about some of the current prices we have here in 2023, as well as give some other optional um, places you can sell some of these things instead of scrap value. So gonna start over here with my washer and dryer. I'm gonna turn my camera a little bit. The washing machine, as I said right here, was extremely heavy. And that was because there were three of these large cinder block uh, items that attach to the drum to make sure that they don't, uh, the drum doesn't bounce around. And I have seen some people comment that they sell these online. People will buy them to put them around their tree uh, because they will go into a circle. Uh, or other garden uh, decor. Uh, so that is definitely one option. For me, because it does have, as you can see with my magnet, a magnetic um, piece of metal that goes all the way through this, you could also actually just throw this right into your tin pile. Regardless of the concrete on here, uh, you can still bring it into the scrap yards. And currently right now in Sarnia, Ontario, it's about nine cents a pound for tin. Uh, and in London, Ontario, it's going for about 14 cents a pound Canadian. So both great prices and all three of these together, I'm gonna get some pretty good weight and money just from these, okay? The drum, another item I wanna look at here, the drums, this is something that you want to make sure you put a magnet in. If I was to put a magnet in the drum and it did not stick, then that would be non-magnetic stainless steel. And currently non-magnetic stainless steel is going for about 77 cents a pound. This one, however, is going to be tin. So gonna get the nine cents a pound for it. There is a plastic casing around it. I'm not even gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave it on there for the weight. Uh, some scrap yards, especially out east, I've had some viewers say that they actually get money for the plastic that they bring into scrap yards. In Southwestern Ontario, if it is on the metal, we will get um, the weight for it. However, I cannot bring in plastic separate. Uh, I wish that Southwestern Ontario and the whole province of Ontario got on that um, same um, incentive. But unfortunately, the plastic that I do have, I will have some garbage and I will put the full weight of my garbage that I have from these appliances down in the description as well. But this is, as I said, magnetic. And I have also had some people say that they will sell the drums to campsites. I have one here that I took out. This is the dryer drum. You can see very nice, large circular one. I can cut it in two and actually get two of these, but campgrounds will buy these even for $20. It's a lot more than I'm going to make from my tin shred. So that is also an option. Uh, but if not, 
Again, some more tin here. Okay, but that came out of this drum. And again, this one's a lot easier to do because there isn't any plastic on it. Uh, as well, the rest of the outer coating of these appliances is going to be classified as tin or shred. Okay, so a lot of my panels here that you see, some people want to ask what, what's the difference between tin and steel. In order to be classified as steel, the material has to be thicker than a quarter inch. So all of the outer panel is very thin. So it's going to be tin or shred in Southwestern Ontario. I have had some of my viewers say, what is shred? I've never heard of it. So it does vary on scrap yards and regions, but again, all of this is gonna be tin shred. And I am looking forward to seeing how much of this I have because there is quite a lot of it. It is definitely gonna fill up my truck. Inside of here, a few really nice items. I have on the bottom here a nice copper bearing motor. And you do have to check these to see if they are copper windings or aluminum. Um, I have seen some, doesn't matter the age, it does depend on machine to machine, but very easy. If I scratch the coils here and it reveals copper underneath, then it is going to be worth my while and attention to open it up and take out that copper. That copper right now, once I take it out of that motor, if it was copper, it'd be number two copper and currently going for $4.60 a pound. If I was to scratch this coil and it revealed uh, um, a metallic look underneath, then it's going to be aluminum. And that would mean that these are aluminum windings. And I would get for an aluminum motor like this about seven cents a pound. So I'm actually just going to leave it as is and get the tin price. This one, however, I have scratched it somewhere. Where did I scratch it? Right on the side. There it is right there. Okay. Scratchy scratch. Look at that right there. That is copper. So this is going to be worth taking out. The rest of this casing is actually cast aluminum. Uh, cast aluminum right now, you can see it is non-magnetic. Um, cast aluminum is going for about 55 cents a pound. Same items as some of your barbecues, your frying pans. So there is some dirty cast um, inside because some of it I won't be able to get. But all of this outer, once I pull out the inner plug there, here's some clean cast, but the copper is the money maker there. So I'm looking forward to taking this apart and sharing how much copper was from this motor. There is also another smaller motor that I got out of this dishwasher or this washing machine. You can see right in there, there are two coils. So you will find a lot of these as well on your dishwashers, but two little coils of copper as well on here. There is a little bit of magnetic attraction you can see. So all of these pins and bolts, I'm gonna throw into my steel, but that copper all adds up. I also have right here a nice aluminum heat sink, a lot of wire. Okay, so here is my wire. It was all taken in on one piece. All of this wire here is going to be actually classified as 60% appliance wire. And once I remove the plastic, this is actually going to go for $2.68 a pound right now. Unbelievable price. Uh, and the way we categorize appliance wire, you have 60% appliance wire and 40%. Because these are all individual strands and there's only one coating of plastic, it's higher copper recovery. So that is all 60%. Notice here, I've got a beautiful uh, circuit board here and a really nice aluminum heat sink. This aluminum heat sink is actually gonna be classified as extrusion. And extrusion is going for about $1.25 a pound right now. It's a form of aluminum, and it's any type of aluminum that looks like it's been put through a mold or a press. So really nice heat sink here. I have a whole bunch of these, and extrusion, excellent, excellent item. The rest of this circuit board, once I pull this off, I'm gonna put it into my e-waste. E-waste, I get about five cents a pound. And it is going to be worth my while to take this off. If I was to bring it in whole with this whole circuit board, I'm just gonna get electronic price, a weight price of so five cents a pound. So I'm gonna lose a lot of profit if I just take the time and pull that off. It's just pinned on there. So you wanna make sure you upgrade, take off any copper spools on your circuit boards and aluminum heat sinks. So great aluminum there, a lot of wire here. I do also have a couple really nice smaller wires, okay, on here. These two plugs, 
have a little bit of copper in these as well and I will have an upcoming video showing you how to remove that copper. There is some brass plugs on that. Yellow brass right now is going for $3.25 a pound. Here is another small little motor. There's going to be a little bit of copper in there that I'm going to open once I pop that cap off. And the appliance wire, the electrical wire that goes into the wall. This is the cord here. And this as is, is going to be my 40% appliance wire. Notice it's got three strands of coated wire, an outer coating. So because there are two layers of the uh, plastic, it is higher plastic, less copper recovery. But still at 40% appliance wire, this right now is going for $1.60 a pound. So unbelievable, $1.60 a pound Canadian in London, Ontario. Uh, all of your wires like this, microwaves, dehumidifiers, nice thick coat co uh, cord here so great price here definitely a little bit over a pound uh, some people will pull off those brass prongs and put those brass prongs into their brass pile some people leave them on for the weight I do pull them off uh, and have like I said upgrade my brass um, but it all depends on you especially on how much you have but a nice 40% appliance wire here okay uh, so that is all I'm going to do with this one this does have a plastic cover on it I am going to leave it on here. I don't have to pull it off, so I've got a lot of tin. This one, beautiful thing about a dryer, is it always has a really nice cord like this. These types of cords are worth taking apart, okay? I do not take apart my 60%, my vacuum cleaner cords, or my dryer cord that you saw there. But this one is worth it, because you can see it's got some beautiful yellow brass prongs, very thick prongs here that are worth good money. There is a nice clean number two wire that runs all the way down there. So $4.60 a pound for that. And these ones, I will also not only remove the outer coating to this, but also the coating on this because these all have really nice copper inside of it as well. Worth it. It's thicker strand. So I'm going to make some really nice profit um, separating the copper out of here. And I do also have a video showing you the profit from that. And I will include that into my um, my description the link to that one so any type of your stove cords like this or your dryer ones they are worth taking apart uh, for that copper as I said number two copper copper is our scrappers gold okay there is more of my wire look at this it was really nice it all is going to be one stranded okay I do want to make sure for this in order to get upgraded on all of it just remove this plastic piece here okay it just has a couple pieces of tape but if I was to throw this into my pile, because of this outer coating, I am gonna get downsized from my 60% to 40 because of that coating. So very easy, simple thing, just removing that outer coating. I'm gonna upgrade this entire stuff, wire right to my 60%. It does have a couple relay boxes. Uh, these caps, once I pop them off, they are gonna have some really nice um, brass in there. There is sometimes silver in these ones as well, a little, piece of uh, silver on relay boxes. I will cut that silver off. I will put it into a little vial, okay? So there are little ones like that. Any type of click button will have some uh, silver as well. So I have one, two, three here that you see, okay? Even this, you can see some of the attachments, some really nice yellow brass that I'm gonna pull out of there and get my yellow brass pr price for. All of these prongs, I do cut the brass off of these, okay? And I will put that into my brass, but the rest of that wire, going to put it into my 60%. So some really nice heavy stuff here. Okay. Uh, and as I said already, this drum is something you can sell to a campground. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is I have a couple control panels. This control panel did have right here, you can see a really nice transformer. These are my relay boxes as well. Once I open these, they're gonna have a little bit of silver inside of it, a nice spool of copper. Um, but this transformer is big enough. It's got some metal around it. That too is gonna to have number two copper in it. So that control panel is worth opening up that copper. The motor down on the bottom here, if I turn this, got all excited. Beautiful motor here. But as you can see, I did the scratch test and it reveals right there the metallic look so that is aluminum because that's aluminum i'm going to leave it on and get the weight for the tin but i am going to take off right here there is a small control panel 
Okay, right here, little uh, click tabs here. There is, you can see right there, some brass. So this I will cut off for sure, but the rest of this motor, just gonna leave it on here. Even with that dirty cast on there, just gonna leave it as tin. Okay, so that was disappointing. Unfortunately, a really nice motor, really heavy, but again, did the scratch test and it revealed aluminum. So, uh, you know, better than nothing, but if it was copper, I'd be dancing pretty high. So, uh, both good items here. The dishwasher here, this Bosch, couple things that I want to mention. Uh, these racks, you can see, these racks, I'm just going to pull this, sorry, to the side. Okay, put a magnet to these. These are going to be going into my tin, regardless of that plastic coating on them. I can just throw them in. Okay, I had a really nice screen. This screen right here is the catch basin. You can see it is non-magnetic, so this is going to be good stainless steel, so 77 cents a pound for this. The little basket that I have, there is a little bit of stainless steel in that as well. The net, uh, if you want to take the time to crack that off and take it, you can. Uh, sometimes I just throw these right into my tin, okay, but a little bit of stainless steel there. Here underneath was my motor. A couple things I love about dishwashers is there's always two motors to this. There's always a little one like this. Once I pop that off, you can see inside of there, there is some copper. So there's two of those spools, okay? The motor here, I, I have already scratched the motor. This motor as well is going to be copper. So gonna open that to get the copper out of that. Some really nice prongs here, okay? I do have to make sure that I drain it. There is a little bit of water still in here. This is your heating element. There are some coils that go through that. Um, as you can see, it is magnetic. Um, some heating elements are going to be uh, resellable, like ovens, for example. These ones, because they're magnetic and they're harder to get, I just throw them into my um, tin. But here is that relay box I was talking about. You can see right here, this little one. Uh, if you open those, those do have some silver in it. Okay, some really nice brass prongs as well. Some really nice 60% appliance wire. But again, the money maker, this copper motor for sure, gonna get some good money and good weight out of that. And the last thing I wanna talk about with this dishwasher, interesting, if I open it, you can see this door here. Put a magnet to it, the magnet sticks. On the other side, however, you can see it does not stick. And that's because this inner panel is gonna be stainless steel. So I wanna take off this um, outer plate here. I'm gonna get the 77 cents for this inner piece. Inside of here, there are gonna be some really nice control panels that have my relay boxes, a little bit of copper, but the rest of this outer shell will be tin. Okay, so you do wanna make sure you check. Don't assume just because it is a nice shiny look, it's going to be um, good stainless steel. If I was to put a magnet to it and it sticks, there is a category at some scrapyards called magnetic stainless steel. It's about three cents more than tin. So in London, Ontario, instead of 14 cents a pound Canadian, you're gonna get 17 cents a pound. It does depend on how much you have. Um, if I had a huge load of it, I'm definitely gonna separate it for the higher profit. But if all I had was, let's say this door, I would obviously just throw it right into my tin. Um, so again, it depends on you. Some places will not give you the alternative price. They'll just throw it right into the tin. So you do have to check the scrapyard. But as I said, really, really nice stainless steel here. I do have to remove the plastic and any other types of magnetic parts in order to not get downgraded. Okay. With that as well, you will see some of your screws. You can see right here, these screws, if I put a magnet to them, they have a little bit of attraction, so I am gonna throw them into my tin. Some screws, especially from dishwashers and any item that has a lot of exposure to water, will be good stainless steel. So again, if it is non-magnetic, I always separate them from my tin ones. I have a nice large container of those and I will get the 77 cents a pound. So you do wanna check those, but because even there is a little bit of attraction, I'm just gonna throw them right into my tin. Inside this cube here, other nice thing about this, you can see, put a magnet to it. The magnet does not stick. So this whole inner shell will also be stainless steel. It did have 
The bars, however, notice the bars are magnetic. So if I was to leave them on, I'm gonna get downgraded, but because it is non-magnetic now, I'm gonna get the 77 cents a pound. Uh, this unfortunately does have a large plastic coating. So I'm just gonna move this to show you. Uh, turn it. You can see there is right here a heavy plastic shell. And someone asked me, do I have to remove that to get the clean aluminum price? Um, it does depend on your scrapyard. A lot of times what I will do with that is I actually leave it outside in the winter. That uh, will actually um, freeze up, easy to crack it off, um, and I can obviously clean it off that way. If I was to bring it in as is, um, the scrapyard, again, it depends on your yard, depends on the person uh, weighing your stuff. They may just give you the good stainless steel price. Um, and uh, like I said, it, it all depends also on relationship with your scrapyard. If you're a frequent visitor like me, uh, I do get away with some things. Um, so you do want to check, but the inner side here, absolutely good stainless steel. The last thing I have here is my oven. Just gonna move this. I love ovens as well. This has a lot of tin. Um, the door here is magnetic. You can see I don't have to remove the glass here, so that's good. I just keep it all as one part. The coils in here, these were in the burners. They are magnetic, okay? So all of this, I'm just gonna leave as is. There is a little bit of cork in there, but I leave it. Has a beautiful control panel. Look at this control panel here. Has some really nice circuit boards. Has a really nice heavy transformer with copper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight large relay boxes that have uh, a copper spool in it as well as silver. Um, it also has some really nice prongs, some great 60% appliance wire, okay? Um, another thing about this is it also has, as mentioned, the really nice thick cord here, as well as any ovens do have your heating elements like this. Some of the ones on the top, the range or the burner style, all of these are actually resellable in a separate category as burners. Um, they're about 15 cents a pound. Uh, as you can see, some of them, these are non-magnetic, okay? I have had someone that was working at the scale offer me a stainless steel price for him because he wasn't sure of what to put them in, uh, and I wasn't gonna complain about that. But these are their separate category as heating elements or heating coils. Okay. I have seen some people resell those also online if they are in good workable condition. Some people, especially the brand type or the year that your item was made, some parts are highly sought after because they are hard to get. Okay. But the other nice thing about this one is the control panel you had right here. Once you remove the cover, it has what we call a silver mallard board. Okay. You will see these in all of your uh, microwaves. You'll see them on keyboards. All of you, the buttons you see there, or all of the veins, if you will, are small traces of silver. This isn't heavy, but I have a huge bag of it. I just added up, but it is silver mallard board, so there is a little bit of silver recovery in this, okay? Again, nice thing about this, don't have to remove any of the plastic because of the magnetic attraction, okay? I do have a lot of other items. Um, there is a couple fans, okay? I'm just gonna bring these up to the front. Running out of room. Okay, there is always a small copper motor like this right in the middle of it. It turns the fan inside to cool off the oven, but there is right here a nice copper spool, some brass connected to it. The knobs always also have some really nice brass and copper. Okay, so there again is a smaller copper motor. On this side has two of those relay boxes that has silver in it, okay? Where are my knobs? Another small transformer on this one. Okay, so once I break that cap off, there is gonna be some more copper in this. Okay, it actually had two fans. There was a smaller fan on the bottom. So again, some more copper. Even though that doesn't look like a huge spool, it all adds up. Okay, but your dials, here's my dials here that I have on my oven. If I turn it around, as you can see, they do have plastic on it. Once I break that with the hammer, there is some really nice brass that runs through this as well, okay? Some brass on the top of these. Look at all that brass as well as some wire. So that is really good about my ovens, okay? Um, some other things about it that you're gonna see is the light bulbs, there are, there were a couple of light bulbs uh, on here. 
It did have the little connectors that go with my tube light bulb or my uh, tube. And they will have brass in here too once I break it open. So a lot of things on here for sure. Okay, going to look forward to weighing this separate breaking it down, show you the profit from each material. So again, washer dryer set over here, a dishwasher, a stove, all four excellent items. They do vary in what's inside of each of them, uh, depending on the make, the model, the year, um, region they're made. So uh, again, I can't answer that question, um, which one's worth more. It does depend on each one of them. They are very easy to take apart. And again, I do want to say a big thank you to the Nolan family for these four items. I look forward to bringing them in. Glad we were able to divert them from the landfill um, and make this video. So again, thank you for that. Hopefully that answered some questions. Definitely better taking these items apart, separating them for the scrap value. Some things are resaleable as well, or resellable as well. So you do want to check on your options as well there, but great items for sure. So again, thanks for this. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.